Right, guys, we are back. This is Dan. This is. This is Dan. Right, so obviously, our last talk was about um, what was it about? A about? lot of Final Fantasy. A lot of Final Fantasy discussion. A lot. So this is our early stages of us just establishing ourselves. Blah, 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 blah. Establishing ourselves. We're playing around with setups. We have a microphone. Hence yes, the room. we have a microphone. Yes. Um, we are literally just testing. This is like our pilot episodes. This is us just trying to get an understanding of technology, what we can do, and how we can make it better. Obviously, we're in a there's washing in the background, <laughs> but we're just trying this is to. Our studio. Yeah, this is our studio at current. Um, but yeah, we're literally just playing around with ideas. But we wanted to have some more discussions today. Um, I think we should just go loose to this one. Like, what have we just been up to right now? What have we been playing? We've legit just. Well, anyone who sees your Insta story would see that we've just been playing Bloodborne. So you've just been playing Bloodborne. Um, Why are we playing Bloodborne, Dan? Because it's five, four, four years old. Yep. And I think it still holds up as just fun. One of the greatest games Because it's hard as hell. It's a From Software game. People who have never heard of it. It's From Software, which instantly means it's Gifty. fucking insanely hard. Yep. And the reason it's fucking insanely hard is because I, I love it because it gives me the reward factor. Yes. So you, we just got our asses kicked by Wesley. What are you rewarded for on this game then? Be, Violence. Is, yeah, all right, aggression. You can't be if you push defensive. out. You get yeah. If you push out and run away, you saw that yourself. You get dropped. Yeah. So this isn't Dark Souls. No, it's because not. Dark Souls has got, which is another From Software game, has got a. You can run away. You can do different. St you can be like a spellcaster and all that sort of stuff. But this one, it's you have to get up close. I mean, fuck's sake! Because you're an idiot, you've made us do a whip only run. Yes. Which is the weakest weapon in the game, with the stupidest setting. Yes. So rather than having a big axe or something badass, we're quite literally using a cane that turns into a whip. So you get three weapons you can choose from at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Just like Pokemon, you have Bulbasaur. Brilliant. Squirtle. So we're using the Bulbasaur. Bulbasaur, Squirtle, or you have uh, Charmander. No Pikachu for some reason, which is odd. That was the yellow version. I know, but they they left that till later, didn't they? You... That was the first one I got. Uh, okay, well, yellow anyway, the first one I got. we don't care who you picked. <laughs> but we know that some of them are more... We know that some of them are more powered up than others. Yes, some of them are... Who's OP out of those three? It's Charmander. Charmander has fire. He's OP. Plants... Get Plant, burnt. Plants got wrecked. Plants get burnt and water just... It gets electrocuted. ...is water. So yeah, it doesn't really do much. Yeah. But yeah, this is kind of like that. So we just chose our... We basically chose... Who did we say was the weakest out of the three? Just the Bulbasaur. Mm. So we just chose the Bulbasaur. We, we chose the shit version of Bulbasaur yep. as well. Because there's Bulbasaur mm. and then there's the fucking... Yep. The version of Bulbasaur that's more puss. And we chose the And we Bulbasaur. chose the ultimate puss Bulbasaur. So in this game, you get a choice to start with... A, a, a hand weapon, which is a, uh, a obviously a, a cleaver, a cleaver or a blade of sorts, and you also get to choose a gun. The gun is not uh, something that you for go damage. around. Yeah, it's not for damage. It's a parry tool. So basically, it allows you to respond to enemies who are violent with. So it's stop a, there. It's a less required skill that I not even could do on my first playthrough. That if you interrupt an enemy's attack with your pistol you open them up for a massive damage hit. Yes, basically. The, the reason why that's hard is because you are standing in front of something that's about to end you. Yes, and every enemy as you progress the game has smaller window of opportunity yes. to do that. And in the beginning of the game, any. Yeah, in the beginning of the game, you're Even rewarded, bosses have some you're rewarded with a certain level of ease where you can really read the, the enemy's kind of attack and you know that there's a, a split second or so to yeah, do some the of parry. Yeah, slow as fuck. Yes. Like, there's literally an enemy that, throw, that hits like, you with a brick. And then it's I'm like, gonna hit you now. <laughs> they basically say shoot, 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 but then towards the end, I mean, even bosses at the start, you yeah, parry, yeah, but then towards the end, they become hulking, huge, fast, fast, fast fuckers as well. Yes, and even trying to parry him is just brave. Yeah. So, um, yeah, the reason, so my reasoning for being back on Bloodborne, it just seems to be one of them games that never loses its appeal. It doesn't get old. Uh, and the story is out there, and it's not certain, it's not to you. and it's not certain either. So it's one of those stories. If you know anything about FromSoft games. You kind of got to put the pieces together yourself, and you can constantly add to your own. Um, you can add to your own thoughts on what the story actually means because it's never certain that that is the right story. You know, mm. we we could say something completely different than to a year ago, and no, none of the answers are wrong or right because it's about interpretation. It is interpretation. I mean, I think, there, I think there is an official. This is what it is like for, that they've released. Yeah. But I find it more fun to have that ambiguity speculation yeah to speculate and go right yeah. this is what i think it is like i mean without going into it there's a lot of lovecraftian shit there's a lot of cthulhu Mythos, yeah. sort of stuff a lot of that yeah. there's a lot of people trying to cure their illness with blood treatments which is causing people to turn into fucking beasts and yes. shit and you would know you could theoretically go for the entire fucking game see the credits roll 
and still, and have, a still clue. not have a clue. Yeah. To be fair, I don't have a fucking clue. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And I play through it about ten times. You'll find yourself doing this. You'll find yourself playing the game, and then you'll find yourself going on the internet at the end of the day okay, to search to search for deeper lore mm. because you are intrigued. It doesn't. It's not a game that you play and you don't care. You do care. You want to know. You do, you do want to understand the story because you're playing through this as this character. You want to know why your character's experiencing what they're experiencing. So, you know, the only way really to kind of find out the truth of everything that's going on is to extend the universe of the game outside of the game. Yeah. It's great because it gets you to look at other sort of media. Like, it allows you to... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which I think is great. I think it's good when a game doesn't give you everything you have to look elsewhere. I was going to say it calms you down. It calms you down. Because the rage that people get playing from software games... I had it. My first one was Dark Souls. Yeah. And the rage you get from just getting your ass kicked by something over and over again. Yep. And you go into it going, right, this is going to work now. And then it does something different. Yeah, right now's the time. And then you and, end up doing worse. But we went against Wesley, which we're now... There's an enemy. There's a boss called the Bloodstar Beast. We call him Wesley. Well, you know, his name's now fucking Wesley. But he's a bastard because he poisons you. But he's so quick. If you try and run and He heal, chases you. Yep. He chases you. Jam- yep. he, he just he takes you down. And there's yep. nothing you can do. And you got beasted by him. Yep. I got beasted by him. But then... We went back with a different technique, exactly. and then he did something different and yep. killed us again. So we're we're near the beginning of the game still. Aren't we? Yeah, because of the whip. And uh, we're not rushing. It's one of those things you don't mind doing the odd hour here and there. It's how we kind of socialise. Uh, another sure, thing. We that, do that, don't we? Yeah, we, that's our way of catching up. You know, rather than going to the pub and having a pint, we sit in front of the PS4 and rage. And rage. <laughs> but uh, what else is going on? In a minute. Obviously, today is the release of another game that this boy loves. Oh yes. Yes, but so. we spoke a hell of heavily about it last time. Yes, yeah, so, but uh, Final Fantasy VIII, as we spoke of, is out Remastered today. Still. Remaster. So if you guys have not tried Final Fantasy, it is. It's not like you have to go to the first one to introduce yourself to the series. No, because they're all. It's an anthology. They have their own stories. They're not connected. You can literally yeah, play. Got anything to do with you can literally game. play anyone you like, and this one wouldn't be a bad place to start, in my opinion. It, yeah, it's old school though. Yeah, obviously, it looks yeah. like shit. Like people go, "Oh, I should It still looks like shit in comparison to today's. You were a kid nowadays, growing up and playing it. You'd be like, "This looks trash compared to yeah. Fortnite and everything." I but, I play, and my missus walks in the room, and goes, "What the fuck?" Yeah, yeah. And uh, I just say, "You know, this is classic. I still love it. I still think it's fantastic." Uh, as soon as I get home, mate, I'm on it. Yeah, right, so that's it. he'll be on it tonight. I'll be on it tonight. Um, what else was we so uh, let's move on now we're going to get into the actual subject of what today was all about we were thinking about Capcom games and what our favourite games are from Capcom Mm -hmm. obviously there is a quick mention of games such as Devil May Cry which is a fantastic series and uh, we had the joy of playing Devil May Cry 5 of recent which was a a very very good uh, return to to form in my opinion it took us back to the quality of number 3 I thought they were good anyway yeah I I wasn't a fan of 4 I like DMC yeah, he, attempt at a reboot. I even liked that. Yeah, Dan liked the uh, Ninja Theory slash um, Capcom DMC remake, which it was, was a reboot. It was kind of like you could still include. The, I'd still say the story exists, but it's a par- it's a different universe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I wouldn't write it off. They even sort of like parody the actual game. Like, it's a bit when like the, the white hair goes on. Yeah, to the yeah, yeah. Exactly and that not. Never, like, yeah. They know they're acknowledging it. Like yeah. it's definite. But the Devil May Cry series was very, very solid. So if you haven't played that. Uh, I'll give another shout to On the Musha series. That was ah yes, the unheard of Capcom series. On the Musha was fantastic, but it was awesome. It, and you know, if I was to say one thing, I say if you can get your hands on On the Musha three of all of them, that's your favourite one, isn't it? It's like a movie. It's, it's like got Jean Reno in it. It's got Jean Reno right. from Leon. It's literally got Leon. Listen, literally, his, his likeness, his Leon, voice. the professional, is in the game. Is in a ninja how is, game. How is not not fucking fantastic? <laughs> Samurais really- and Leon. Um, that's a really good game. The concept behind that is just literally mo- monsters trying to kind of take over Earth, in a sense. But they're not. I don't know where they're from, but they're called the Genma. And, uh, I think they're from like a demon realm. How do you remember this? Oh, I just do, just I do. I liked it because if you like a story, you remember. Yeah, yeah true. But I th- that's the thing. I played the shit out of Onimusha mm. back in the day, but it has been so long since I've played one of them. I've forgotten everything. You're about just not it. as invested as I was that's in Samanusuke. I cared about Samanusuke. Yeah. Samanusuke, was, Samanusuke was the main character. And yeah, he, was, yeah. he was another real life actual actor from, I believe, Japan. Much like me. Uh, so basically, they their their designs of the characters were based on real people. What, even the Samanusuke? Yep, the likeness yep. of an actual actor. Yeah, cool. yeah. We'll find out that's which cool. one and let you know next time. Mm. But so yeah, so but the, the games that you wanted to talk about today in brief, um, mostly well, all Capcom, obviously. You yeah, mentioned all big ones. Yeah. So it's obviously the let's go, let's just say it, Resident Evil series. Mm. Um, it's had its highs, it's had its lows. It's been some shit ones, it's been some good ones. But for some reason, if you're a Resident Evil fan, you still play the shit ones. Um, there's a certain level of um, 
uh, loyalty that you have to a series, and you still yeah, try. I agree with that. Yeah, you still wish to try because you still want to put. It sounds weird. You still want to put money in their pockets in the hope that they invest that money back into the, the franchise and bring something better out at a later date from the feedback we give them. And I think they have done that this year. I think with the Resident Evil Two remake, they they went back to gold. They yeah. knew they had gold. Yeah. They had gold. They yeah. used the Resi Seven. Engine, engine, yeah, the RE engine, and just went right. We're gonna do that and just bring back a one that everyone loves. So they use they use the engine from Resi Seven, but they use the, the visuals from say Resident Evil Four with the over the shoulder, didn't they? Because oh yeah, with the, yeah, because yeah. Seven was first person. Yeah, which so, by the way, VR, fuck that. Seven was a good game. It was good. I, I, we yeah. done a full run on that yeah. one night. It had well, a it had a weak ending. But it, it played well for more than three quarters of the game, and I think it was worth the purchase. And you can probably get that for cheap now. Oh, yeah, Jesus. Um, Re- Resi 7 was awesome. It had so many... Because basically, like, ever since 4 came out, they went very action-y. A little bit too action oriented. Number 5 was more Took away action-y. the fear. Took away yeah, the fear. Yeah, number 5 had co-op. It was fun. Co-op in a... Yeah, oh, me and you played fun. the shit out of that. We're not talking about that Wesker thing. Yeah. But like we actually played the shit out of that, and we enjoyed it, but it's not scary. It's yeah. meant to be survival yeah. horror. Yeah. There's part of you that feels bad for enjoying it. Yeah. You're like, oh, shit, and I'm enjoying it. And then number 6 came out, and it was like, right, there's three, four storylines that you yeah. play through you had the horror element with Leon you had the action with like fucking um, Chris Chris you had the with stealth with Ada and stealth with Ada and then what's his name Wesker's son Wesker's son was just pure it, beat, it was beat em up it was, it was, a beat em it was up. Streets of Rage but from a third person yeah, point of view uh, you were literally the guys from Streets of Rage yeah. just running around and punching things called Jarvo which were basically just um, and the fact that this is on the, the IP of a Resident Evil game is unbelievable yeah. I, it, I, was a, it was a good I game liked it. It was a, I liked it that's listen, the thing I liked it it was a wicked game but that is all it was. It was a good game. It, it was, was good action. It was game. a terrible Resident Evil. Yeah. And I think what they realise is they need to focus on the core elements that made Resident Evil. So people Evil good. bitched, people moaned after every Resi game that came out. Number four, people loved because it was so advanced. Still a bit dark as well. It was the first one that had 3D. It was, the it was like going from GTA overhead to Two to three. three. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. you know I mean? So it had people like, oh my God. Wow. But then they took that element and went mad with it. So they eventually went back to, to the old root style of yeah. scary. Yeah. And seven was fucking terrifying seven had its bits we it? played that together in a fucking at night because it was stupid and yeah. I was genuinely shitting it I think we had it on like a 60 inch telly around oh, our friend's yeah. house and we just sat there and like passed the controller around after everyone's you know passed it around after you die mm. and uh, it was a, it was it happened a lot with Luke it was it was happened our friend Luke was he's really shit he's going to come on this at some point but yeah you will you probably just laugh at him guys <laughs> um, but so if we were to let's, let's, let's kind of go into perhaps if you were to pick a a favourite Two. Okay, what, original or...? So, the original two was my first PlayStation 1 game. Yeah. When I got my PlayStation 1, I remember being in the shop and saying to my mum at the time, like, I want this one. And even like, the case. Even, the, yeah, the, the, fa- the skull the white, or the, the white, case, black the case. The guy in the shop literally pulled my mum's side and went, does he know what this is? I had no idea. Hmm. I had no fucking idea. All I know is it had a big, fat 18 sticker on it at the time hmm. and it looked badass. And I got it home and I played it and I... Fucking love scared the shit out of me. I, 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 I can't remember what year the number two came out in. Ninety. It must be ninety nine. It was, late, it was that? later, wasn't it? It was like it was like ninety eight or ninety nine. Fine, so ninety eight. I think it was ninety eight. Ten or eleven, we were. Yeah, we were young. Ten or eleven when that came out, and that was my first PlayStation game. The reason that's my favorite, same reason why Golden Eye is my favorite Bond film. There are loads of other better Bond films, but it's, it's the, the first, first one, one that I and watched. I have to agree there. It was so it's my well. favorite. So Resi Two is my favorite. What is yours? Because I, you are. I love Resident Evil Two, but I, I had Resident Evil One. Because your knowledge of Resident Evil and your love yeah. of it reaches... I, I had Resident Evil 1 on the, on the Sega Saturn. What, before anything else? I had a Sega Saturn before everyone had Playstations. So I played Resident Evil 1 before all these people played you know, Resident Evil 1 on the PS1. So I was a very early, early kind of bird when it comes to Resident Evil series. I shat my pants and I never... When I had it on the, 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 the Saturn, I was so young, I never got past... I didn't know how to save... So I, so I never. Was so, right, yeah, I so I kept playing the first probably ten minutes of the game over and over again. So see the first zombie, shoot your pants, start again. I was going to say, what did you do first time you saw it? Did you shoot and wait till you ran? I don't even remember. It was so long ago, but I just remember that I didn't get past there. And every prick, so, every prick who played that game, opened the front door. Oh, of course you do. Every prick. And then like, the, I wonder if you can just leave. And then the Cerberus. Go, oh, yeah, and, and then, then you like, just get wrecked. I better not leave. Um, but Resident Evil One for me still the one that kind of. Listen, it's the origin. It's the the spooky one. It's spooky. Resident Evil Two isn't spooky. It's, it's, it's disgusting. It's, yes, it's like grotesque. The the G virus, which is the the uh, kind of essentially the thing that caused the whole of Number Two, um, was a grotesque virus that made things mutate over and that over again. Stood for 
Uh, no, no, it stood for just G was just stood for G. I don't know what it stood for because the monster's called G. But in number one, it was the T virus, which, which was, was more. Tyrant virus. It was a tyrant virus, yeah, and it yeah. was more. It was spooky. They were experimenting on human beings, animals in a lab under a building that yeah. was secretive. So it was very spooky. It had that feel of like mystery, and then the second one, you knew that there was no mystery anymore. But what it had is that budget it had budget and fear, yeah. and like realism because you're like, wow, this could spread. The city. Well, it, it was literally like, in the city. Yeah, like right. it was like, oh shit! It hit it this, this this contaminated event that was so small has now gone global, mm. and it, it was scary. You fuck! If the world ended up like that, I'd be in trouble. And uh, it couldn't. It really couldn't have gone any further than that. I think one and two, like, is all you needed it's because so the story. It's unreal. Yeah, and the story reached its apex by the end of two, in my opinion. The only way you could have gone any further that is global fucking... Dis- which is what the films did. But. Which which doesn't feel scary. It just feels... It's, that's The Walking Dead. We don't need to see that. So... Yeah, true. One, two for me. And three was good because three happened during... Three was an expansion of two, Yes, wasn't it? three happened... Before. It actually happens before two and after two. It spreads out. Yeah, yeah. There's a part in the game where you, you fall asleep for a while because you get infected and the game... Oh, actually, yeah. Yeah, and the game carries on. <laughs> and by the end of the game, you're actually set off to two. The story writers forgot how they can tie it in. Which I know. falls asleep. I know. But it was a... Uh, that those three games were really really good. Code Veronica wasn't too bad, but it wasn't scary. All Code Veronica was was to just throw a little bit of back lore in it, just to get a little bit of story in, yeah. a little bit of this, a little bit of that. That's all that that one was for. Yeah, was, I liked it, but it because it wasn't because we, at that age, like I like number one, I like number two, I like yeah. number three. I don't care about the X's and all that sort of shit, yeah. and that was a problem for me. Yeah. Well, like when recently when Revelations came out, I'm not fussed. Yeah. Because it's not they're not main, the main they're, arc. they're not main arc main titles. Yeah, it's not canon. I have to say the it. first Revelations I played, and I did quite enjoy it. I didn't mind it. No, it was good. But I, I didn't play say, two. Same as the like, like very 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 recently they've released that there's going to be a new Outbreak game. Yeah. So what well, they currently for. currently supposedly working on an Outbreak game. Yeah. An Outbreak series was an MMO online multiplayer. Uh, which came out originally on the PS2 when you had uh, yeah you had to have like a modem for your PS2 to play with other people um, but we played it on our own first time though, yeah I only ever played it on my own so mm. but it was yeah. fun because you were j- it was just the same thing happening in Raccoon City as well wasn't it wasn't it it was, it was basically tales of people that were going through the event of number two that was it but not the, the main protagonists from the game so it was basically regular people which is quite cool because you're quite helpless you got to choose a character you could be yeah. the big black you could be a big black piece officer yeah, yeah be, exactly. that's who I played as because I wanted the fact that he had a bat yeah, we can be up, some little cool. like I think there's a little Asian woman like yeah so you basically got these extremes so you can either choose to be the person that's most probably uh, unequipped for the situation versus the one that is most equipped so it's pretty good. It's I'm, pretty good. I'm pretty sure he ended up being quite shit and she ended up being quite useful, if I remember. Well, that's the thing. They trick you. She probably was able to go through gaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or but mix it, herbs or something. It, was, like it was cool back then. The fact that it wasn't a normal Resi title, but it had this... I don't know, it was fun. It was cool to see the city Yes. from other kind of people's perspective because Even the zoo. there was places you couldn't go in the game from Resident Evil 2 that you could go in Outbreak. It, because it expanded the, the universe. Yeah, but because number one and number two were on the first PlayStation... They didn't have the the disc space mm. to create this huge world. That's no. why number one is all in a mansion. Yeah. Number two is theoretically all of it's in a police station. Yeah, theoretically. Give take the beginning bit and the end. It's, it's bit. isolated places like yeah. sewers and the lab are all like kind of it's the same, just different textures on the walls and background. But like number one, for instance, they had oh every zombie looked the same. Yeah. And then you had the hunters, which were like the war. Hunters were when you get halfway through the game, it was like the step up of intensity. They came out so they of nowhere. Can just fucking, they can one shot you basically. Yeah, take um, your head off, and that was terrifying as a kid. It was pretty cool, and then obviously in number two you had liquors. But the thing is, in number two they fucked you up because they gave you the liquor early. As soon as you walk in the fucking yeah, literally thing, they they, you get they the were shotgun, like, they go, you know, ah. what would be fun? What would be a good way to shit these people up? Let's mm. throw something in there early on. Mm. Um, and they did. It did shit you up. So the liquor shit me up in two. The dogs jumping yeah. through the window in number one. I don't give a fuck how many times yeah. I could play that now. I know it's going to happen around yeah. down that corridor and that glass. It doesn't shot, happen. Though, it doesn't happen if you only go one way. I've heard that, but and I've done that. Only you know the fucking way around the yeah, game without yeah, yeah, looking yeah. at a guide and shit, which is ridiculous. Yeah. But I always go back, and they always jump through, and they always shit me up. <laughs> but number three introduced a new kind of shit you up because you literally had the same area from two practically, right. but you were being con- constantly pursued by nemesis. And what we'll do, we're going to pause there because this is part one, Ooh. and we're going to resume with talk of number three and nemesis after. Ooh.